I'm going to talk about today something, a topic that I, well, we've been discussing a lot inside Zoho. In fact, a version of this presentation was made for our own managers just last week. So we have been on this thread a lot, how to build better software as craft. So when we here first, let's look at the word, the word evolution in the English language. We think of it as a smooth, continuous, we are evolving into something. We often think of, we use the word that way. But you know, if it's really true that, you know, this fierce guy, 65 million years ago, he is the one facing the carpal tunnel syndrome today, right? <laughs> so that's what evolution smooth would have meant, right? Well, but the history that actually happened was these little guys. Apparently, this was the only real mammal. This is our ancestor, great ancestor. So um, <laughs> that's so. You know, it's hard to believe how this could have happened, right? I mean, those fearsome dinosaurs versus those furry mammals. And the contest somehow ended up in our favor, I guess. As they say, asteroid happens. <laughs> so that, you know, our industry is very, we are familiar with this notion. So we think of evolution, it's a steady process. I have to add, except when it's not. That's a crucial disclaimer we have to put, except when it's not. And you can say continuity interrupted by discontinuity. And that's starting point for our own industry. We can see this process repeatedly. This Again, this continuity and then this continuity. And I submit the process of innovation is the same thing. There is continuity followed by discontinuity. You have that same exact interplay between a continuous, smooth process that we normally think that's the world that we are used to, and then there's something happens, an asteroid happens, and there's discontinuity, and then those furry animals become something else entirely. And continuity is about focus on the details, the small little things that matter. And discontinuity, well, you cannot really focus on it because you never know when it's going to happen. So you have to recognize it and act on it. That's discontinuity. You have to recognize it. Hopefully you survive it first and then recognize it and act on it. And the key thing about discontinuity is that it is entirely unpredictable, even accidental. Asteroid. So you just cannot make any prediction about it. You cannot plan for it. No one can plan for these discontinuities. And they are also easily missed. If you are even in the middle of a discontinuity, it is extremely easy to miss. And they are only recognizable in hindsight. There's a lot of evidence for this. Here are some quotes I put together. These are 1876. You can read it. Western Union dismissing the telephone. And in 1977, you know, Ken Olson, the founder of digital equipment, dismissing the PC. And these discontinuities were happening as, as this particular, these people were observing it. So that's what I meant. And now, closer to our time, about six, seven years ago, I guess seven years ago, the iPhone happened, asteroid happens. Unfortunately, that's most of us. When something momentous happens, we tend not to recognize it. That's how discontinuity happens in our business. I mean, so all of us are subject to it. I don't, I'm just, you know, it's not something that in 1876 Western Union missed or 1977 Ken Olson missed. In our industry right now, you know, this is really true, that whatever discontinuity that happens, we tend to miss it, recognize it only later. And in fact, if you look at the history, even Apple didn't fully recognize 
the iPhone significance at that time. If you read Steve Jobs' biography, there was no plan for an SDK and he opposed an SDK. He opposed the single most critical thing that made it a platform. He opposed it because he didn't want third parties putting you know, their stuff on the phone. This beautiful thing that his conception, he didn't want third parties polluting it. He had to be talked into doing an SDK. So you can say, tell that it's, there was not a discontinuity they planned on. It happened, as tried happened. And of course they wrote it, but that's what tends to happen in our business. That even the, the, the creators of the discontinuity, the people who, who actually cause it, causal agents, don't necessarily recognize it as it is happening. That's a key point about discontinuity in technology. And anywhere, I mean, this discontinuity, about any of this, you cannot anticipate it. You hope to recognize it and hope maybe you can survive it and take advantage of it. Of course, now back, now on the smartphones, every year they are on the path of that smooth evolution. Things are getting better every year. You are on that continuity again now. You are steadily seeing improvement every year. The apps get better. The apps get more, there's more diverse variety of apps. And then you have the, the uh, uh, of course, the speeds, the display, 3D now, all of this. This all continuity, really, right now. Of course, until the next discontinuity arrives, we don't know, we cannot know, hope to know what it is. No one can predict it. And as I mentioned, we can only hope to recognize it when it happens. So that's the key part to recognize about it. And that's, that brings up that focus. So during the time when you discontinuities happen, what matters is that continuous improvement. Really, and that's what the most, I actually traveled to Japan a lot. We have a, we, from the very early days of our company, we had a Japan office. Partly because actually I'm seriously interested in Japan, studying them, understanding their methods. So this Kaizen, this is an important hallmark of their craftsmanship. And of course, here in Silicon Valley, we are about disruptive innovation, the discontinuity, causing, as they say, disruption, which is a good word here, right? But in reality, even our business is actually a combination of both. It's not just disruption all the time. We need to get work done on a daily basis, and we cannot be changing our technology all the time. So really a great company has to combine that continuous innovation, that Kaizen, and then the ability to recognize and drive that discontinuity. Maybe some of it you get to drive, but you at least hope to recognize and act upon the discontinuity. That's what really a great company that survives multiple decades, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, that's what you have to be. You have to have that continuous innovation, and you have to be able to drive or recognize and drive this continuity. That's the key. Now let's come back to our business, cloud software, our products. If you project it 10 years down the road, it's very clear that we are going to have some kind of CRM. We are going to have customers, we are going to have salespeople, we are going to have deals, we are going to close them. So we are going to have CRM. We are going to have, be supporting those customers. Some kind of help desk will be with us. Obviously, some version of email will be with us. Maybe it will be combined with social networking and chat and all of those, but it will still be recognizably something like mail. And something like spreadsheet will be with us. There will still be presentations. Maybe I'll be 3D projected into this room and I'll be projecting, but presenting, but there will still be a presentation. Right? All of this will be with us. And they'll be both familiar and different. This presentation itself is not on PowerPoint, it's on Zoho Show. That's what is different from the presentations we ourselves used to make before Zoho Show existed. Ten years ago, I used PowerPoint myself. Now, of course, we use Zoho Show. So there's the familiar and different. It's evolving. The tools evolve, and there's discontinuity. That's the key, that these products, all of these will evolve, and I mean in the true sense of that evolution that I said. There's continuous refinement, punctuated with those 
accidental maybe or, or bursts of things that happen, discontinuities. And let's look at that, what we do here, we come to work driving that evolution. How does CRM look a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? What are the pieces that we need that will be taken for granted as part of CRM? What are the technologies? What are the uh, uh, tools we need? That's what we do here, driving that evolution. That's our primary work. And at the same time, look for discontinuities. What are the things that are happening that could be, for example, maybe it's something like a, a, a new uh, Google Glass. Could that be something valuable in CRM? You have to look at that. Maybe you know, three years from down the line, maybe the, all of you will be sporting a Google Glass. Who knows, or a watch. And all those things could become relevant in a CRM context. That's the kind of discontinuity we have to be aware of and drive it. That is our primary work. Along the way, we also have to drive that continuous innovation, that focus on the details, focus on a lot of little things, big things. That is part of our job here. And that continuous refinement, let's take that part, it requires a lot of focus and dedication. It's not something that you know, we, we know after evolving the product for all this time, we know how much focus it requires. And it requires a mastery of the craft, a long and painstaking process. This is where my insight from Japan comes in. I notice just how long they've spent perfecting their craft, everything they do, how much attention they pay to the littlest of details. And that is a painstaking process. And it's the same thing true in CRM, it's true in help desk, in all of that, that we have to master the craft. And your organization culture shapes and directs the process. Ultimately, it's not just some tool, it's not just a piece of software. And our product, what, we, what you visibly see, is a manifestation of that culture, that organization culture. And if we have a certain type of culture, the product will evolve in a certain way. And so it is important that we have the right culture to help direct and evolve, no, direct that evolution. And we have a culture here where we have people spend years mastering the craft. In fact, it's not, you will see, in fact, if you travel to multiple events, you'll see familiar faces. There'll be some new faces, but there'll also be a lot of familiar faces. And our product managers, architects, leads, all of them, the average tenure is 10 years. They're still very young people. I mean, if you see the you know, faces, you might see, man, maybe he's 30, 32. But they've already been spent, they've spent 10 years. And these days now we have actually over 300 people who joined us fresh out of school, high school, 18, 17 often. There's even someone who joined us at 16. We trained her, we, she's a really good programmer at 20 now. In fact, she's actually just became a lead for a team at 20. She joined us at 16. So, and of course, when she puts in 10 years, and she spends 10 years at 26, at a young age, it's going to be really awesome. And that's the Zoho way. We have from product managers, we have over 150 managers in the company. I think about 149 of them joined us. This is their first job. This is the only job they've ever had. That's the nature of this company. We tend to hold on to people. I mean, they know they have a lot of opportunities. You now every other company would love to hire our people, but we tend to hold on to them. And I almost would say they are professionals. They have extreme level of competence, but those words really don't capture it. In fact, this is part of what I often emphasize. Well, a professional is someone who can get the work done, get the job done. But that already implies a kind of a separation between the person and the work, the doer and the deed. And we don't like that, actually. It's a, that's, that attitude is necessary to survive. I mean, you can survive well with just being a professional. But it's not sufficient to excel, to create truly outstanding works. And it's, as I say, it's necessary to be good to be professional, to be competent is necessary to be good, 
but not sufficiently great. And so we need something more than professionalism and competence. So the words we emphasize are mastery and craftsmanship. That's what we expect our people to be, to be masters at what they do, to build their craft. And the passion, that inspiration, these are the words that really matter to us. Which is why you know, we really don't care for degrees in our company. That I mentioned we hire high school kids because we want them to eventually become masters, really become one with the work itself. That separation goes away. That separation between the doer and the deed goes away. And then the, just like the product is an expression of our culture, the work becomes an expression of self. The work becomes an expression of self. That is the key thing we expect. We, and you know, it kind of goes into a spiritual realm. You work itself becomes a form of meditation. You are in flow. The work becomes part of you. That is when you produce truly outstanding work. And the truly outstanding work, inspired work, passionate work, that's what we seek in our people. That is what we have built the culture around. That is why we tend to hold on to people. That our people stay because of that, that, that culture here. And I want to contrast it. You know, you ask a question. Look at the, the environment around us here in Silicon Valley in particular. People talk about passion, and yet every three, four years, jobs change. People switch jobs, our companies exit. How can you passionately work on something with the goal to just stop working on it? And yet that is the prevailing culture here right now. And most companies, this is, this is the attitude. They'll tell you, they'll talk about passion. In fact, one of my friends told me, you heard this beautiful lecture from his vice president about passion, inspiration, all of this. The next week, he's reading the news that he switched jobs to a competitor. <laughs> he said this, one of my friends told me, you know, how will the team feel when people do this routinely? And yet, this is extremely common here. In other words, that speech is just a job he's doing. That is just, he's a professional. He's giving that speech as part of his work he's doing. He's competent. He gives a great speech. And then next week, he's, he'll go and give a, a different speech as a different company. Well, I don't see how true passion you can you just stop doing it later. And that's what our industry today is. Vast majority of companies, they are driven to that exit. Constantly, that's the focus here. No matter what they tell you, you know, the bigger companies are focused on the stock price. I noticed this personally. I've dealt with a lot of big CEOs, and I saw how much how obsessed they were with the stock price. It's unbelievable. And the smaller companies, how someone bigger will acquire them. That's the focus here in this industry right now. You ask, why would you exit something you love? Why would you exit that's a true passion? That's an inspiration for you. And now the other side of the exit is, of course, consolidation. In our industry, we see that again and again, almost every day, every single day, we hear news of some acquisition M&A happening. And of course, the current bubble, we are in the bub bubble territory right now, it's just making it you know, extremely bubbly, extremely you know, active in terms of M&A activity right now. And I'll just put up a product suite, switch it together at random. That's what our competition is doing. So we, let's just say that we don't believe in this whole thing. Our philosophy, our worldview is extremely different. This company has been around 17 years now. So we are here to stay. This is what we love. This is our passion. We built this facility because we want to keep doing this. Right? We, are, we built this because we can conduct a lot of events, bring customers. We love this interaction. We bring in all of our product management, all of these people, so that we can interact one-on-one -on -one with you, the customer. And we want to conduct more of these. We noticed as we were doing a lot of these events, you know, there ought to be a better way. That's why here, this beautiful town. So we have built this. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have, this will be the beginning of many, many more events for us. So we love what we do. We intend to keep doing it. You will see a lot more things from us, as you have seen in the past. And the fact that we love what you do matters to you, because our product gets better, our products get more integrated, we listen to you, 
we keep coming up with new things. And hopefully there's only one thing there, hopefully we also recognize the discontinuities that happen, which no one can presume to do. No one is given that. And as I say, our value comes from our values. Our value to you as a customer, our value we offer in our product comes from those values as a company. And in this, the convictions we hold about our products, the direction of the products is, are important. But we try to hope, keep our convictions, strong convictions, but loosely held. That's important because, as I mentioned, all of us can only hope to recognize the discontinuities. No one is given to know what will happen, what exactly, how the future is going to hold. But by keeping a humble attitude, keeping us ourselves close to the ground, we hope to listen to what is going on, listen to the market, and recognize discontinuities. So as we focus on mastering the craft, drive that continuity, we also hope to recognize this continuity and serve you better. At this event, you're going to see a lot of improvements, continuous refinement of our product offering. You will hear a lot about each particular feature, everything getting more and more perfected, more things added. And we are on a path where we have a conviction that is says the business applications we need fully integrated something that just works for you as a business that is our conviction that is our vision and we are progressively rounding out the product suite around this and integrating the product suite and in the last four or five years we have come a long long way in this and we continue on this journey and we say our quest to the words I use, refine, reimagine, and reinvent. That's how we, and hopefully recognize discontinuities that happen, the four R's. The refine and reimagine, reinvent is on the continuous path, and the recognize is for, keep your eyes open for discontinuity as it happens. So CRM and support and campaigns and the entire Zoho Suite survey, all of them are in that refinement, integration, reimagining. And this is an example that I actually wanted to show of that refinement. You know, most of you have used the mail integration with CRM. How many of you use mail, Zoho mail integration with CRM, the mail plugin? So you'll see there's a completely new reimagination of that feature. You'll see the email, your email, all of these are emails. But they are categorized according to whether it's a potential, a contact lead, or from an unknown person, or your colleagues inside your own company. We think these are the most useful, useful categories for a person in sales, because you want to know immediately when something is coming from a contact versus someone coming from a potential that you are actually already have an opportunity you're working on. So you can take care of that quickly. And this particular way of visualizing the product. It's coming across all of it. We are doing this in support tickets. We are doing this in uh, tweets. So if you see a tweet, we want to categorize it this way. So basically, we are using the CRM database as a filter into all of the events that stream into you, whether it's emails, whether it's tweets, whether it's social media posts, blog posts, whatever. They will be categorized this way. So the salesperson who is on the job can quickly take care of it. And of course, all that, so you can take an unknown and make it into a contact. You can promote a contact to have a potential. All of this will be drag and drop. So this is how we are re-envisioning the CRM and email. And in this event, we also are introducing what we believe to be a quantum leap, a discontinuity that no one else offers. This comes from our, basically we call it, we call this rigs the product name, the, the feature name for it, and rings because we want to build durable relationship. We want you to build durable relationship with your customers. And this is CRM reimagined, CRM in real time. You basically convert your website into your storefront where your salespeople can recognize people as they come. So this is how it looks. So the salesperson at the center and you have uh, 
all the visitors. As the visitors get, initially the visitors start out like the stars outside, unknowns. Those are all the visitors on your site. And then the system goes to work identifying this person actually, they are negotiating this deal with us. It recognizes that visitor. Then it puts them in, if they are already in hot opportunity or working with, it puts you closest to you. With someone who is a lead, they put it in the outer circle. So as people move closer towards you, that's how the, this thing is architected. And you can pick up and chat with them. For example, if there is a potential that you are negotiating a deal with and it's supposed to close this week and they are in your pricing page, that's a good sign. You can go and help them out. On the other hand, if they are in your competitive comparisons page, maybe that's not a good sign. So you have to go and intervene and find out why they are comparing to competition right now in the last minute. So this puts you in control, the salesperson in control, with your real time, it gives you a real time feed into what is going on in your website, into your CRM, all of this is fully integrated. This came from our live desk technology, the live desk team envisioned this, and now we are adding it to CRM. So with that, I'm, and this is going to be presented in the third day, and there's a lot more stuff coming, so you will hear all about this. I just highlighted two of these that are being shown in this show. Thank you.